Hey everyone, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. How are we all this evening? Um, big day today in the gaming world. Uh, the Fortnite World Championships. <coughs> uh, singles finals were today. Duos were done yesterday. And a young name, young lad named Booger took off the crown and three million dollars US to go with the big trophy title. Um, forgot to watch a little bit of it. Uh, when I had a chance, and yes, yeah, wow, to see that many guys go, that many high level guys going for it, and when it was coming down and the storm was closing in and down to nothing, like 20 or 30 blokes in a really tight packed area, uh, it was pretty darn cool. Um, he, in the end, just smashed them. I think he, um, he led from start to finish pretty much the whole thing, and by the time there was about uh, the storm was minimised. It was about it was in the top ten of that, and there's no way he could have lost. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, big congrats to him. I think he'll. Uh, I didn't don't know exactly his age. He looked about 15. So I don't think you'll have to worry about working for a long time. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty amazing. From when I grew up, and we were still using typewriters at school, and yeah, Commodore 64 was my first computer at about 14, about 15 or 16. So. And there was, yeah, no one ever even thought you could ever make money out of gaming. So, pretty darn cool just to just to witness the level that is. And it was a full stadium, like a massive full stadium. Would have been at least five to 10,000 people there watching it live on screen. So, and plus probably millions more will watch it over the course of the day. So, yeah, pretty huge. Um, Tfue got knocked out the last year's, I think he was last year's world champion. And he was the favourite. Um, he's obviously with Ninja. He's one of the big boys in it. And I'm sure this uh, Booger guy, or B-U-G-H-A, -B -U I was calling the Booger. So that's what they were, that's how they're pronouncing it. It was pretty funny, I thought. So, yeah. So I'm sure he's gonna his channel will just explode now. He'll get a ton of subscriptions on Twitch and on, on um, YouTube. So good luck to him. Um, what else? Today, they had the, if you're a fan of Australian fishing YouTube channels, um, you probably know a guy named Brooksy. He's been around for a fair bit. He's a pretty cool fisherman. Um, he's got a heap of good friends that are fishermen as well, and they sort of mix their channels, which is pretty cool. Uh, the last, or the last week or so, I think it's been, they were in Dubai for the World Fishing Championships. Um... And it was big money. I think it was about eighty-five thousand bucks prize money for first place cash. So um, now I guess, like me, you're probably thinking Dubai fishing. What have they got? They've got GTs. They've got these big bass type things. They've got like uh, like coral trout looking fish. A uh, heap of really big big fish. The guys were. Um, They've got, he's got some great videos up. I'll put a link down to his channel. You can go check it out um, <clears throat> to the series. You can watch it before they find out. But, yeah, um, the guys had the win. Uh, they beat the American team. American team come second. So there's a pretty awesome to watch. Well done, Booksy and the team. Um, team Wombat was the thing which I loved, which was awesome. Uh, Aussie team and their team was Wombat, sufficient team. So that was pretty cool. Um, I've seen some of the bass ones where they go down and sort of represent the countries in Mexico and stuff but sort of never like nothing sort of you don't see any Australian teams into that bass side um, so I think as an Aussie with our offshore fishing guys and all these guys that go out the reefs and, and the deep sea fishing uh, your GT specialists and stuff on the east coast boys uh, I think you'll love it um, I'm assuming it's an annual comp uh, I'm not sure what you, what you get to pay to get in there um, but yeah, it looked like it was pretty well organised. It's a, the, the the jigging side was a catch and release, so it was a length plus the uh, width of the fish formula, and then you had to film the actual catching on you on a on a video, the measuring and the release all on the video. Otherwise, you didn't get the point. So it was pretty. The rules were pretty stringent, so that was that was pretty good to see. But um, <clears throat> apparently, no fish. I don't think any fish. They didn't have one fish die for the whole tournament. Uh, they all swam off, so that was pretty cool to see. Um, yeah, 
so that was that was pretty cool. Brooks is his name. Um, yeah, got a good channel, some heaps of good fishing content on there. Check it out. I think you'll like it when you want something to watch. And then the only real other thing we had today, which was out, um, the new Razer laptop, uh, 15 inch. I think it was a 15 inch. Was it 15? No, it was. A, I think it was a 13. No, might have been. Yeah, 13 inch OLED screen. Uh, so the hertz rates dropped. Obviously, they made for uh, a gaming type machine, but um, they have brought out an OLED screen, and it's only 60 hertz refresh rate. But it was an amazing picture. Um, Lou over on the unboxing therapy had it, and it looked really, really good. It had all your ports, your, USB, your Thunderbolt 3s, your USBs, your pretty much everything the Razer comes out. And I think he was using a Razer. He had a Razer there at the top of the line gaming one there not long ago. It was basically a more aimed towards the creator type people. So if you're YouTube guys out there and you're looking for a new machine, I think it's the first OLED screen. Um, so for photographers and stuff like that, if you're not a Mac person, uh, like myself, and you're looking for a Windows option that has a really good screen, then it's going to show show all those colours that you're getting. Um, that OLED screen will be really good. Obviously, it had all the latest gear, the i9 chips, and it had a what did it have? It had a really good graphics card. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm, I think it was a 2060 or a 2070. Um, so like a really high level card. So <clears throat> yeah, really, really nice. Looked really good. It was a little bit expensive. I did go shoot across to the Razer website, the Australian one, to have a look at it. They didn't have the OLED screen up there, of course, because we're so far behind as per standard. Um, but I think they had, I think their best they had was like a, a high def 1080p screen, and that was five grand. Uh, about three to three or four grand. I looked at the 15 inch actually because I was I'm still comparing, trying to work out what I want to do. Um, but yeah, so the <clears throat> it's probably actually comparative to the MacBook Pros, like the the uh, the quality of it. So, but I, with that OLED screen, it will make a big difference to just how long it takes to get to Australia and then what the price is going to be here. I think he Lou said they're roughly about three grand over there. So. Australia, that's probably going to have about five, five and a half, six. So anyway, that would look really good. Now, <clears throat> as I just said before, one thing I did want to talk about is websites. Um, I don't, I do a ton of internet shopping. I have for years. Very rarely do I need to go to the shop to buy anything because I know the, my size of my shoes. I know my clothes. They haven't changed since I was in high school. Um, and even though the Australian government smashed us, smashed us with GST on top of our import duty, that now we've got to pay on everything when we bring it in from the States, it's still cheaper to buy from the States for everything. Um, their buying power far exceeds our 25 million people. Um, so it's just, it's still way, way cheaper to do to get stuff from the states now as i shop online all the time i sort of consider myself a fairly fairly bit of an expert at internet shopping and getting a good deal i know how to get it here if they won't ship it i know i know all the back doors and indoors and stuff like that you can go on and see my video on how to use velocity points and i've used a lot of ways to get that way on my shopping to, to help me out there but the biggest thing I've noticed in Australia, and the one thing that drives me nuts with Australian companies, is put a price on your products. I can go to America and look at a Chevy truck, and I can build, build and price uh, a truck, a computer, uh, whatever I want, and go to the manufacturer's site and get a price, and a, a, re a retail price, and I can, not a fair amount of them, I can purchase it straight through the manufacturer in the States. Not in Australia. Ugh. I think your, your places like Harvey Norman or 
JD Hi-Fi, the retailers, yeah, you may be able to. But like specialty items, like a laptop, good luck. You drink, you smoke and crack if you think you can get a price off them. Um, <clears throat> computers, everything you look at, cars, you can't go online and get a price of a car. You got to put in a postcode, and it's all different. You've got to ring us here. Uh, I've been looking at fishing trips lately um, for different options. For us to do some fishing with the boys with halves and nidge. And you can't get a price. You've got to ring someone or send an email or wait for them to call back. Half the time they don't call back. Half the time they don't email back. And all you want to know is the price. Like, some of the things I was looking at was, I guess, like high budget stuff. So I just wanted to sort of just get a ballpark to know if it was even worth worrying about. To do. So I just to take it off the list. And then when you get an answer back and you've just invested that time and then you're still waiting to hear back and then you get a price back and it's just out of control, it's like, well, just put it on there. Like... If it changes, go on the website and change it. It's a, a bit of a pet peeve I've been getting a lot lately and I find it absolutely ridiculous because there's no need because there's no... I, do not, I don't understand why Australian companies have to hide the price from people. Are they, what are they doing to people if they need to hide the price on the website? How much are the retailers whacking on top of what they're buying it off the wholesaler. But like, I understand everyone's trying to fight for it, but it's business. It's not friendly, happy, go lucky. It's a business. You know? Amazon's going to come in and just crush everyone. So, like, their prices are all up there, and they're a retailer, and they can beat wholesalers half the time. So, it's. I just don't understand it. I find it highly annoying. I. I reckon it'd be great if I don't see why you've got a registered retail price if you want to have discounts and stuff have them in store so you can get the people in store that's fine but in store you can have a thing the good guys in store come get us come and ask us and we'll give you a better price but here's our price bang but I'd say at least 50 to 60 percent of sites um, or things you look up in Australia no price no price price on application POA uh, it's annoying one good thing the government did a few years ago is when you do a car that they have to tell you the full on the road cost price when they advertise um, because it was a it's a similar it was a car salesman wet dream to be able to just tell you it's 43 grand then you get, go to sign the paperwork and it stands up being 50 and that's I think what happens with the other stuff so it is a pet peeve of mine and I thought I'd just bring it up because I've looking up some fishing stuff and bits and pieces even stuff like I wanted to get some prices just on PNG black bass fishing, and no, can't get a price. No idea. So I had to find, I had backtracked and found something on one of them. One out of, I think, six of them had a price, and it was like $8,000 per person for a five night stay. So it was just like, okay, that's out of elite. Good. I don't have to do any worry. I'm not going to ring you up, waste your time. But I've sent off emails to other guys, and it's like, they haven't told me, so I've asked, and they've got to ring me back, and they're chasing me up, and, like, these are super mega prices. I, I know I couldn't afford it. I just wanted to get a rough idea, but you, you can't even get that. Like, just a, just a ballpark, guys. Give people a ballpark so they know what they're sort of dealing. You can put on there, additions may apply per dates or whatever. I understand that needs to change. But, yeah, it's, it seems a bit to be everywhere in Australia a little bit, especially on their websites. It's very much more enjoyable shopping in America than it is on online than it is in Australia. So, a little tip for the retailers out there. Open, be open, and be happy with your customers. And the customers will keep coming back. Anyway, so that's about it. Um, so, yeah, Booger, world champion of Fortnite. It's still the biggest game on the planet. It has dropped a bit. I've got to, I'm going to throw him neck out in the woods in the old... My old champion, PewDiePie, uh, Minecraft is booming at the moment. He has just jumped up to 98 million subscribers. And I reckon it's all because of this last month of July. He's basically done Minecraft month of July. And he has been flying with the, with the um, views and likes. And I reckon he's shot up again. And I think it's no coincidence that Minecraft has had a huge resurgence. In, in the last month and Fortnite's dropped down a bit so 
I'm going to estimate what it be July, I reckon by September, maybe October. If he keeps this up, I reckon PewDiePie is going to hit his 100 million by then. And Minecraft is, is making a big comeback. Um, you Minecraft gamers, if you're old Minecraft boys and girls out there, if you're into that, I'd would be be worth a little bit of a chance to get on there. Now, tomorrow night is my shift change night, last and not least. Um, so I get 24 hours off to get some sleep, but we're going to be doing some fishing. So I'm going to be doing another live stream of the fishing. Uh, I may even go into the monthly tournament for the fishing sim world. I'll get on there and suss it out. Um, if not, I'll continue on with the career mode and we'll do some more tours and a heap of that stuff. I'm going to do some video editing tonight for the WA Shipwrecks Museum um, and a bit of a Frio walk around I did with Jack while I was on break. Hopefully I have that finished tonight. May have to finish it off tomorrow night. We'll see how we go. But yeah, so look, check out. I'll tr I've got to work out how, what, what the time zone is with the YouTube to let you know the time and date, but I'll try and put the link, get a link up there, there on Facebook and that to let you know when I'm going to start fishing streaming and get you on there. And if you haven't already seen, down below is our new Patreon account list. Um, yeah, just set that up for you guys out there if you're interested. Gives you another avenue where you can support the club, the Mighty Tigers Fishing Club. And that's about it for another night. Um, one more day of day shift and then we go into night shift. For second week. Beautiful. So whatever you're doing, if you're having breakfast, lunch or dinner, waking up, going to bed or out in the town, which is Sunday night. You might be in the States. It might be the Sunday session. Anyway, thanks for watching yet again for another night. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all tomorrow for shift change and some fishing. Anyway, guys, G Fuel time, and I'll catch you later. See ya.